In this video, we will explore some practical examples of ALMA tuning setups that can be used when continuum observations are a primary focus of your science program. If you are new to ALMA, we recommend that you first watch our video Sidebands, Basebands, and Spectral Windows, Principles and Components, and then come back to this video. Before we get into specific examples, let's briefly review the radiometer equation. The radiometer equation says that the noise level in an ALMA observation depends directly on the system noise of the telescope and inversely on the square root of the bandwidth times the integration time. When calculating the required time on source, you will first need to decide what signal-to-noise ratio you want. Remember, the signal-to-noise is just the expected intensity of your science target divided by the expected noise. Then calculate what sensitivity you need to achieve that ratio. For example, suppose you had a source that you believed to have an intensity of 100 millijanskis and you needed a signal-to-noise of 20 in order to model your data. This means you would need a sensitivity of 5 millijanskis. You will also need to tell the observing tool, or OT, which bandwidth to use for this calculation. For science programs that have continuum as the primary focus, the widest bandwidths will typically be used, meaning that the bandwidth, or delta nu term, will be at its maximum value. The OT will then calculate the integration time needed to achieve the desired sensitivity and bandwidth. It is important to remember that even when continuum observations are your focus, ALMA is sensitive to line emission, particularly to broad line features such as CO emission in external galaxies, or bright lines which may be present over a very narrow frequency range, such as maser emission or radio recombination lines. It is important to keep this in mind since such lines may be of scientific interest or may negatively impact your continuum measurement. Let's get started. When choosing the spectral observing mode in the OT, the single continuum setup is the simplest but it is also the least versatile. It is appropriate if your science target isn't associated with strong spectral lines. Examples include thermal dust emission from some circumstellar disks, or free-free or synchrotron emission in distant galaxies. Single continuum mode will automatically generate four basebands containing a single spectral window in each for the chosen observing band and polarization products. These windows can be configured in either low spectral resolution, or TDM mode, or high spectral resolution, or FDM mode. The basebands are chosen to yield the best overall sensitivity given the atmospheric transmission at the ALMA site by adopting the maximum baseband frequency coverage and avoiding frequencies impacted by water absorption lines. You can shift the sky frequency, but the relative placement of the windows will remain fixed. If you do shift the sky frequency, be sure to avoid putting your continuum windows over any strong atmospheric features. Note that even the single continuum tuning setups always have individual channels, which are combined by the pipeline to produce a single continuum image. In the low spectral resolution option, the channel widths are several tens of megahertz wide by default, which typically corresponds to a velocity resolution of several tens to hundreds of kilometers per second. This is the optimal choice when line emission is not an issue, and it has the added benefit of yielding the lowest data volume. But what if line emission is a more significant component of your observations? Let's explore in more detail the setup for observations in which we want to capture both continuum and line emission since this is a powerful ALMA capability that can be used and set up in different ways. The first option is to use the single continuum setup we've already discussed, but with the option for high spectral resolution. This will retain the total bandwidth, but has many more channels, yielding a channel width of one to a few megahertz, corresponding to velocities of a few kilometers per second in most bands. This option will also significantly increase the size of your data files, 
because all four of your spectral windows will be configured for higher resolution. For astronomical objects with few spectral lines, this is not an optimal continuum tuning setup. But for sources strongly associated with spectral line emission, this setup provides a powerful tool for multi-line detection and even serendipitous discovery. Let's look at an example of how powerful the high-resolution single continuum mode can be. Here, we see a subset of the frequency range of the band 7 receiver, shown here with the emission line frequencies from just a few astronomically interesting molecules. The gray bars show the default position of the single continuum spectral windows for this band, while the yellow bars highlight the many other potential tuning positions you could choose. As the spectral windows step through the frequency space, the lines detectable in the setup are highlighted. Though not all lines are equally strong, in a tuning setup for deep continuum imaging, varying the placement of these spectral windows can enable serendipitous, simultaneous detection of multiple spectral lines. If no line emission is detected, those channels can still be used to measure the continuum. What if you know that at least one bright spectral line is likely to be present in one of your continuum spectral windows? If you want to avoid that line, you may opt to shift the continuum spectral windows away from the line frequency. If the line emission is of interest, or you cannot find a tuning to emit an unwanted line, there is an alternative option to single continuum mode. In this scenario, you can manually set up your tuning with the spectral line option in the OT so that three basebands are used for continuum observations with coarse spectral resolution, and the remaining baseband is set up for line emission at high resolution. You can use as much or as little of the baseband to cover the line emission as you want. The simplest setup would be to choose the broadest bandwidth that delivers the spectral resolution needed. This ensures that the continuum can be effectively measured for subtraction from the channels containing the spectral line, and for combination with the other continuum spectral windows. It is also possible to subdivide the baseband coverage into different spectral windows if desired, which is a more elaborate setup we will discuss in our video, Sidebands, Basebands, and Spectral Windows, Practical Examples for Spectral Line Observations. No matter the setup you choose, it is very important to be careful to use the correct bandwidth for your sensitivity calculation. Depending on your science requirements, the bandwidth used could be the total frequency coverage of the observation, the resolution of a single channel, or anything in between. If the continuum observations are your primary goal, and the line sensitivity is less important, you should use the aggregate bandwidth option. However, if the line sensitivity is important for your science goals, you should use one of the effective channel width options, which will calculate your sensitivity in a single channel rather than over the aggregate bandwidth. This will significantly increase your required integration time, and you will need to justify that choice in your proposal. One additional caveat when targeting even a single spectral line is the need to specify the radial velocity of your astronomical source in the OT. Whether its velocity comes from your source moving through space or from cosmological expansion, any radial or line of sight motion will induce a redshift or blue shift in your source's observed spectrum. The frequency at which we expect a given molecule to emit is determined by its physical and chemical properties and this so-called rest frequency is typically measured in a lab. The OT will use the rest frequency of your observations and your source velocity to calculate the observed frequency for your target, and it will tune the LOs to match that observed frequency. If you don't list the correct source velocity in the OT, you risk missing your target line, especially for fast-moving or high redshift sources. In this video, we have discussed practical examples of tuning setups for ALMA in which continuum observations are a key element. If your primary interest is observing spectral lines, look at our video Sidebands, Basebands, and Spectral Windows, Practical Examples for Spectral Line Observing.
Happy tuning. tuning.